Hi, I'm Lana Mobley. And I'm Mark Whitlock. As you can tell, we are not on the regular set of the link this week. We are at the Coweta County Fair that's running from September 20th through the 29th. How fun is this? What a great place to be. Years and decades of history. 40,000 people here last year. It's going to be hopping this year. It is, and the good thing is they, the Kiwanis Club was able to give back to the community $150,000 that that really is needed. So it's awesome. So you're going to have to come see throughout the show, you're going to see bits and pieces of the fair. So it's really fun. They do a great job with this fair and they give so many tickets to young people. They do. In our schools who mm -hmm. have an opportunity to come out with their parents and what, what a great family event mm -hmm. for people to come to. Well, in walking through the Midway, we saw some of the shows that they're going to be having every night and there's one particular adventure company that is here that has wolves and there are camel rides that you can pay for. So this, that's going to be interesting. Camel in Coweta. <laughs> that's right. We're just hoping there's not one that gets loose that's with someone right. on his back. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, besides the fair, we do have a lot coming up on this show. Mark, what, we, what we, else going on? We've got a great show this week. We've got Ross Davey from DDJ Event Productions along with Scott Waller from Edward Jones Investments. These groups have teamed together to create Run For This City. And they're oh, going to be right. doing a 5K in downtown Noonan. Uh, 500 runners is, is the max. So they're going to benefit Meals on Wheels. And is, if I'm not mistaken, isn't that run going to be run simultaneously across the country, I the, believe? The, there are going to be events going on in other cities. Mm -hmm. This particular group's working with Edward Jones across the whole state of Georgia. That is awesome. Well, and we had a special guest host this week, Candace Lund, who is a friend of ours that lives, you know, a couple doors down from me, actually interviewed Bruce Dobson, uh, Hobson, excuse me, from the, um, he's a, a children's author, and he also writes for Disney Junior. He was at the Carnegie, and I understand it was an awesome event uh, with his stories, and his childhood was in Africa, and Candace was very kind to interview him. Extremely interesting. Taste of Noon coming up. Laura was able to go uh, talk to the folks in at the uh, Let Them Eat Toffee and find out what's in store for, you know, the Taste of Noonan in the fall, which is one of my favorite times of year here. Absolutely, absolutely. A great show this week. It is. So, you stay tuned. Don't turn the channel. You're not going to want to miss this particular episode of The Link. Stay with us. We'll be right back. for this city, 5K, downtown Noonan, right around the corner, and it's going to help benefit Meals on Wheels. Meals on Wheels run by volunteers who provide meals for the homebound. Many of you know someone who's affected by this great organization. Come out and show your support for Run for This City, the 5K. Here to tell us about it, Scott Waller, Edward Jones Investments, Ross Davey, DDJ Event Productions. Thanks for being here with us today. Thanks for having us. What a great event. How'd you come up with this idea? We, we realized the need for Mills on Wheels of Coweta, uh, need for, for constant funding, a source of funding. And we thought, what, what better way than to have a race and, and raise money? That's, that's great, that's great. Ross, DDJ does a lot of different kinds of events. You're partnering with Edward Jones to create this race event. Yes. Yeah. How'd you, how'd you start that? An Edward Jones advisor talked to us about the possibility about doing a, a race series for Edward Jones uh, to help people like Scott who are looking to help the local communities that they're in. Okay. So we talked to some advisors, got ideas going, and they picked a charity and we run with it. Okay. So how's it going to work? How do people sign up? How do they get involved? How does the money get raised? Who gets the money? Walk us through that. Yeah, the advisor, which is Scott and Noonan, he comes on board to raise a certain amount of dollars for that charity and that money goes directly to that charity. Okay. So, and Meals on Wheels, he is getting local corporate sponsorship. Okay. That money goes straight to the charity. We deal with the race registration, which you can do through raceit.com. Okay. or raceforthecity.com. Okay. You register through there. We then process the registration, 
and then a, a large percentage of that money goes to Meals on Wheels as well. We just cover the cost of the event. Great. From there. The cost for runners to register is? It starts at 20 at pre-registration and works up to $40. Okay. If okay. you go on our Facebook pages, you can get uh, discount codes as well to okay. use off of that. All right, super. Now, um, how long do people have to register before the race? The race will be on? October 20th. October 20th. Yeah. Race will be in downtown Noonan. Mm -hmm. How long do people have to register? They can register up to the 18th. Okay. It'd be great if they registered before because it makes my life a little easier. Okay. Getting the packets and stuff together. But, but you've got a cap on registration. Yes. So people need to understand there's, there's a, a set number of yeah. runners. How many runners? Well, limiting 500 runners. Okay. That's just so we can do a, a quality event and be able to raise a substantial amount for Meals on Wheels. When we get above that number, it's harder to handle. People won't have such an enjoyable time on the course. So that's why we capped it at 500. Okay. Scott, Edward Jones Investments all over this country. Sure. You've talked to DDJ. You've gotten them to create this concept for you. You're going to use it across the state of Georgia. We are. We, are. we hope to expand it. Uh, with offices all, all around the country, we could definitely find local charities to help. And with, the, uh, with DDJ on board, obviously, uh, uh, could do a great job with local charities. Yeah, yeah. The, the um, idea to help Meals on Wheels came because Edward Jones is particularly invested in helping Meals on Wheels? That's right. We have uh, clients and we have uh, advisors that actually help deliver meals and volunteer with the organization. So we understand where the money's going to go to and we understand that it's going to be spent wisely. Okay, great. And you saw a need for Meals on Wheels to have sort of an annual annuity. That's right. We need to, to give them a, a, a structured funding uh, that they get, that they don't get any, any other source of funding outside of uh, United Way. Okay, so United Way is the funding source for Meals on Wheels. This diversifies the funding and That's maybe right. creates something that can happen each year. That's right, and then they can feed more and more people every year. The need is out there. The need is out there. Uh, the need is limited by funds and by drivers, I suppose, the, the number of volunteer drivers. That's exactly right. Okay. They can use help on both ends. Great, great. Um, Ross, you're going to do this again in Macon. You're going you're gonna to do it in Griffin. You're going to do it in other communities. Noonan is first. Yes. Okay, so we get to pilot this opportunity with DDJ, run for this city, created by Edward Jones Investments. Mm -hmm. Guys, we're going to wrap this up. Um, any thoughts about uh, what you expect out of this year? What's the goal? The goal, obviously, is to raise money for Meals on Wheels of Coweta, but secondary is to go out and have fun. Run the 5K, enjoy yourself, and come back every year. Make it an annual event with the family to do a good, uh, a good charity and at the same time help the family with, with being healthy. What a great event. Scott Waller, Ross Davey, Edward Jones Investments, DDJ Productions, run for this city. Thanks for being on the link. You stay tuned. There's more to come. There's always something happening in downtown Noonan. Shop at our unique businesses, dine at our locally owned restaurants, and play in our parks. Join us the first Saturday of each month for Market Days, featuring more than 50 vendors offering homemade, handmade, and homegrown products. Enjoy exciting annual events like the Labor Day Sidewalk Sale and 5K Road Race, the Fall Art Walk, the 20th Annual Taste of Noonan. Come downtown for the Oktoberfest beer tasting and downtown trick-or-treating. Discover downtown Noonan, where the owner is always in. Guys, imagine walking into the garage and finding a new, chromed-out 1100cc V-twin bad-to-the-bone hog with a little note from your wife that says, just because I love you. That would feel pretty cool, huh? Well, her bad-to-the-bone hog comes in a little box. It's well within reach, and let's face it, she deserves it. R. DeBose Jewelers, 5 Greenville Street in beautiful downtown Noonan. Coming up next, Candace Lund is our guest host interviewing Bruce Hobson, who recently came to the Carnegie. He is an author of children's books and also writes stories for Disney's Junior TV show. Stay tuned, this is a great show. My name is Candace Lund and I'm the Children's Cultural Program Director 
for the Noonan Carnegie Library Foundation. And I am so excited to be seated next to a wonderful children's book author, Bruce Hobson, who has come all the way from Kenya, Africa, to talk to our community children. Thank you, Bruce, for coming. It's You're a pleasure to be here. 8,000 miles. It's <laughs> a long way. <laughs> Bruce, you have written over 13 children's books based on these beautiful, beautiful African animals. How did you first start writing these wonderful fables? When I first came out of university, I wanted to be the next great African author. Um, but what seemed to be most needed were collecting African fables because at that time Michael Jackson was really popular and so that came to Kenya and all the kids were listening to foreign music and, and nobody really listened to the stories that they'd listened to from their grandmothers and grandfathers for years. So I set about collecting them um, and thought we could, because fables are just retold every generation, I thought I'd retell them for that next generation. And it was more difficult than I thought because quite a lot of the stories from Africa are very violent, yes. like when the hyena cooks the elephant's babies and <laughs> things that wouldn't be very suitable. For. Yes. And so it took us a while to find publishers who really liked what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And in the end, we ended up with a collection of some invented stories and some traditional Kikuyu or other Bahili tribe stories. They're, they're absolutely wonderful. And the children have have just loved them all. Um, probably from your success from, from these books, you uh, parlayed that into your television series or, the, or your writing for the series for the Tinga Tinga Tales. How did, how did that series come about? How did you become involved in that? That was the BBC, who, um, their producer, Claudia Lloyd just done a very successful series called Charlie and Lola, which I think went all over the world. Charlie and, and Lola. for her, her next series, she wanted to do African animals and African fables. And then she found the Tinga Tinga artists, which is a very particular style of painting that's instantly recognizable. And she thought that would be really good, ele ed an education mm -hmm. program, as well as being an entertaining program um, with these fantastic illustrations. So she had a competition for the Tinga Tinga artists and um, the winners came up to Nairobi and she built a, a studio basically for this whole series and taught the Kenyans to, to do the animation. The Australian people who did the program came in and taught the Kenyans and the music was all done by Kenyans and oh, it, she left behind this wonderful cartoon studio after she'd finished the series. That's and the series became enormously popular in Britain and is now as in America on Disney. That's right. It's now airing on uh, Disney Junior here. Um, also, the series and the materials that came from the series has sort of uh, spawned this early education uh, preschool initiative that's kind of spreading across Africa. You almost have your own pre-K schools over there, and they're using the Tinga Tinga Tales as a foundation of, of some of that. It's just fabulous how this is just grown. That, again, is Claudia. She decided that they would, since children really, could, really did relate to these animals, mm -hmm. that they would be perfect teaching aids to teach mm -hmm. through TV. Right. Um, and it's been enormously successful. That's wonderful. Um, yeah. yeah. And... Uh, you know, these animals were a big part of your life growing up. You were born in Nairobi. I was born in Nairobi at a time when most of the roads were not paved. Yes. Say paved. Yes, not, we do say not paved. Not tarmac. <laughs> um, and we lived in 10 acres of complete bush with a river at the bottom of the garden. And we had hippopotamuses and crocodiles through the garden and porcupines and deer. And as little kids growing up, this was just fantastic. It had to be. Uh, had animals to be. really become of your lives mm -hmm. and we never have had zoos but all the places where you see the animals the animals are in open parks mm -hmm. so they very much seem part of your life rather than yeah. things to keep at a distance how, how wonderful i think that's one thing the children in in the program we did today 
the, the children really got the idea of a zoo with no walls and no gates and no fences and cages. Well, we were just so thrilled that you came all this way to talk to our children and to show them that uh, they themselves can easily write a book. All it takes is their imagination and they can draw the pictures. And we even showed the children in some of our programs today um, how to start writing a book, you know, with your idea and then showing them a long storyboard. And we actually, um, we have one picture right there. Yes, yes. What, yes. what we showed and them is that a book really starts with a, all the pages put in a, a, a straight line, an illustrated book like this. And then you put in small boxes where the text is going to go. Um, and that goes to the publisher who decides at this stage whether to make changes or not. Um, and then we put the text in and eventually it ends up. You're on your coffee on, table on or your coffee library, table. <laughs> library shelf. <laughs> well, first, I Hopefully wanna... it's going to yeah. help the children to go home and think, I could do that too and yes. <laughs> make their own Because that is a, a wonderful boards. gift to give them. Um, and so thank you for all the time you've given to our children this week. I know it will make a lasting impression on them. So what thank is, you for coming to Noonan. Uh, asante, as I've learned. <laughs> it's been <laughs> a real pleasure. It's a lovely town, lovely people. Yes, yes, I've had a really good time here. Well, we're very Thank happy. you for inviting me. You're welcome. As you can see, I'm standing in front of the funnel cake at the sweet shop at the fair. And speaking of tastes and good yummy food, Laura talked to Phyllis Graham about the upcoming Taste of Noonan. I have a privilege of being at Lent the Meat Toffee right now, talking with Phyllis Graham, co-owner of Lent the Meat Toffee. Thank you for joining us on the link. And fall is in the air. We have cooler weather, and there are so many events that are going to be going on in Main Street Noonan. And Lent the Meat Toffee is a big part of Main Street Noonan. You're located on the Court Square. Um, first, let's talk a little bit about the Taste of Noonan that's coming up and how Lent the Meat Toffee will be involved. Thank you, Laura. Thanks for being here. Um, I can't believe Taste of Noonan is such a part mm -hmm. of the history of Let Them Eat Toffee. We actually joined Main Street back in April of 2009 before wow. we opened the shop so we could participate. Mm -hmm. And I remember it just being a, a throng of people. And of course, ever since then, I think the numbers have grown. Oh, yes. It's a great opportunity for us to mm -hmm. expose our toffee and also... Uh, we've been doing more fun things like chocolate-covered bacon wow. and pretzels and that sort of thing. And people just come out and get to uh, try our chocolate, mm -hmm. for one thing. And I know um, Gina has talked about our chocolate before. It's a 64% dark chocolate, mm -hmm. so it's better for you. So we just like to uh, tout that our candy shop is really like a, a little health food store, a little treat for yeah. you and a little... Um, soothing for your soul too because it just makes you feel better. I saw that y'all have one toffee and it's the seven days of the week and it's like a little almost like a tablet of it dark is. chocolate that you can take one for each day. Talk a little bit about that. It's just a, a fun thing we've done. It's called a daily dose of chocolate. It's seven <laughs> days supply. It's the dark chocolate that we put in um, the enrobing machine mm -hmm. that we cover everything with. So a lot of times people we'll get a sample of that and we tell them that that's the chocolate we use on everything. Mm -hmm. But we do have a couple of customers that swear by it and yeah. you actually get four per day wow. uh, if you snipped it and used it like a vitamin pack. Um, our toffee probably is, you know, the, the best seller we have and we make all mm -hmm. of our toffees um, naked without the chocolate in case somebody, you know, doesn't want the chocolate mm -hmm. and just wants the, the pure toffee. Um, but we do the pecan with... Um, obviously the Georgia pecans, and then uh, just topping with no nuts, and then the macadamia, uh, which um, we're low on right now, but it's my favorite, and it has the macadamia nuts in it. Oh, yummy, and their toffee is fabulous. You definitely need to come down and taste it. And also, what are some of the best sellers? We have the Uncle Carrie's Grand that everybody knows about, and um, one that I've heard a lot about is the Fig Noonans. Yes. And what else do y'all have? 
Um, the chocolate truffles are very popular. The orangette, which is a candied orange peel covered in the dark chocolate. Yummy. And then the spice chili mango is, is kind of that um, spicy with a little bit of chili uh, aftertaste on it, mm -hmm. so that people like that as well. And of course, because the horses have been on the square, it's been just a wonderful thing to have them downtown. And we're so glad that four of them mm -hmm. are going to remain on the square. So we'll continue to do, uh, Carrie makes a horse pucky, which is <laughs> shredded wheat, coconut, peanut butter, and chocolate covered in the dark chocolate. And then he also makes a, a chocolate, uh, solid chocolate horse head, oh. which I just feel like you know, it's just, it's really yeah. a, a beautiful thing. But a horse pucky is quite tasty, and um, people do like that. But we give part of our proceeds to the Historic Society to oh, support wonderful. the museum. Mm -hmm. So we're glad that we can continue that as well. Yeah, and what a fun thing to give your kids, because the kids have enjoyed coming downtown they to have. see all of the horses. And, I mean, that is a perfect, fun, sweet treat to give your children. And I really enjoy this tower gift box that Lent Them Eat Toffee has. Can you talk a little bit about how customers can come in and would like to give the tower box? Yes. Um, Laura, basically we can customize anything. I've got just a sample here of a tower box that with the boxes and what we've included in it um, would be about $35. And we usually try to do, um, right here I have the, the bigger box we call them our Georgia crackers, which includes the Fig Noon and the Uncle Carrie's Graham, the pretzel, and a putting on the Ritz, which is a Ritz cracker with peanut butter in between it. And then the middle box would have um, some of our toffees, mm -hmm. probably naked and a chocolate. But the nice thing, if you come in, we can customize it. If you have mm -hmm. uh, a friend that you know doesn't like nuts, and we can do just the plain toffees. And then in the little box, I've done our, our fruits, our antioxidant fruits. So it... Yummy. Um, it's, it's kind of a wide array of, of uh, chocolate in, in robed confections, but the idea of being able to customize a gift is really yeah. think, important. And it, I mean, it's beautiful. Y'all wrap it beautifully, and then all of the delicious goodies y'all put inside of it. What a fabulous gift to give anyone. And we want to encourage everyone to come out to the Taste of Noonan. It will be Thursday, October 4th yes. from 5 to 8.30. And it's located in the beautiful downtown Noonan on the Court Square. And Lent the Meat Toffee will be a part of the Taste of Noonan yes. along with lots of other people. And make sure you come by and try their toffee. It's delicious and come in and see Phyllis and Carrie at Lent the Meat Toffee. And right now we're actually going to have a really fun segment. We're going to have Mr. Carrie and he's going to talk about y'all's toffee and show how y'all make it because they make it right here in their shop. Exactly. Webster defines toffee as a candy of brittle but tender texture made by boiling sugar and butter together. But at Let Them Eat Toffee, our toffee is so much more. I make the toffee one batch at a time.
have your toffee experience at our little shop located on North Court Square in historic downtown Noonan, across from the recently renovated courthouse. You can also visit us on Facebook or on the web at letthemeattoffee.com. As you can see, I'm in the petting zoo at the fair. And uh, right here is Jersey, and I'm not sure what the other little cow's name is, but they're not quite little. <laughs> um, you stay with us because our next segment is the pet of the week, and I understand it is a gorgeous black lab. Thanks, guys. Uh, I'm Sean Mulvaney. This is my wife, Andrea. We're here with Pepper. Uh, we're down at Animal Control on Selt Road in Noonan, and uh, Pepper is a, a gorgeous little female puppy. Uh, she's been in here since the uh, 31st of last month, and it's just waiting for a home up here at Animal Control. She's uh, sitting over in Kennel 815. Uh, couldn't be a more lovable, energetic puppy. She's just ready to play with uh, any little kids that might be... Uh, uh, might be coming out. She's got a little bit of a kennel cough right now, but uh, that uh, that's pretty normal when they come in here. But uh, any small kids, she's just ready to go and play with them, uh, no matter how small. She's a lab that make excellent family dogs, and uh, she's straight from Happy Valley Circle. She's had all of her shots and uh, just uh, is waiting for a forever home. Uh, if you could see it in your hearts to come down and uh, open up your homes and and uh, give her a little bit of love and affection, she'll return it fivefold. Uh, so uh, thank you for your consideration, and back to you guys. Hey, this is Sarah with the Community Calendar. From now to September 29th, the Coweta County Fair will be in town. There will be plenty of entertaining rides, live music, and exhibits. This is something you and your family do not want to miss. If you'd like more information, visit www.CowetaCountyFair.org. I'll see you there. In downtown Sonoya, the 8th Annual Oldies Car Show will be up and running. Hours are from 8 to 5 on Saturday, September 29th. The registration fee is only $20. Also, if you have a 1987 car or older, registration begins at 8 a.m. Don't forget, September 30th is Open Garden Day at Dunaway Gardens. It is from 12 to 4, and it's just $10 for adults and $8 for kids. Come check out the beautiful garden. It's almost time for the Fall Taste of Noonan and the Chili Cook-Off on Thursday, October 4th from 5 to 8.30 p.m. There will be delicious samples from restaurants and caterers. Don't miss out on great food and fun around the square. That was the community calendar for the week. Now back to Lena. I think I'm ready for Halloween. <laughs> I think I am too. <laughs> this is the coolest event. Oh, wow. Well, we have had so much fun this week on the link. And just to recap what we had, uh, we talked about the run for the city. That's right. We talked about um, the author at the Carnegie, which always has good, fun stuff. Let them eat toffee. Yep, getting ready for the Taste of Noonan. Yep. And um, next week, coming up, we have Sandra Holt. And she always does such a nice job with her focus on the health segment. Right. Um, she's got some interesting conversations with some folks about how to stay healthy, how to look at your health for the long term. Exactly. And part of what they're going to be talking about also is the upcoming three-day walk for breast right. cancer. And Dr. Twan, who is a well-known chiropractor in the area, actually is going to talk about how making sure your spine is you know aligned and what what he can do as um, a chiropractor to help you prepare for things like that he's so, a great practitioner right. teaches for west georgia technical he college absolutely yeah. does i yeah. forgot about that yeah. he, he is a great guy and he rides motorcycles yeah and he yeah. does a lot of charity work giving back to the community so that's going to be fun so you know all this week the fair is open and as you can see we have only scratched the surface of what is here to be enjoyed. This, so, this is amazing. Uh, it really what, is. what all they've got out here. New rides have come in this mm -hmm. year. So the 40,000 who came last year, everybody needs to come back. And, and we bring need, a friend. We need to have a friends right. coming with them. That's right. They're going to enjoy this very much. They will. Well, we are so glad you stayed with us this week because this has been a fun show for Mark and I. 
and we want you to tune in next week. And once again, always let us know your thoughts. And if you'd like another topic that you're interested in, you email us at productions at newlinkdigital.com and we will make sure we get it on. Thanks so much and see you next week. Goodbye.